Welcome back to Handy Andy, and thanks for following this video series covering a building of a Virginia live steam engine by LBSC. In the description, I'll link to you the plans that I'm using. They're free and available for everybody. I have already put the frames designed into Fusion 360, and here's what they look like. So I sourced some quarter inch plate steel, but when it was cut, it was uh, not straight. So I had to heat it and bend it straight. And then I'm going to clean it and then put out some layout blue. This is only one half of the, the assembly, and the other half will be then super glued to the other half to basically make a half inch plate. Here I'm marking out the front and the rear extents of the frame so I know where the frame starts and ends. This way while I'm drawing the lines I can have perpendicular lines to reference to. Here I use a decimal to fractional conversion as the drawings are all done in fraction. And I start laying out the lines. Here I'm using some neodymium magnets to help hold the ruler to the plate so I can draw some straight lines. Here you can see the lines fully laid out. I've taken a black sharpie and sharpied out all the lines that don't need to be per se cut to shape the frame. I also took a center punch and center punched locations for where I'm going to drill out some either guide holes or relief holes so when I'm cutting the part can be freely removed. It's also to help have a radius where the two lines meet. Here I'm using my DeWalt portable bandsaw that I hooked up. Now this is all sped up and it took quite a while to cut through this. Um, come to find out later, you'll see that the blade was dull. Um, I went through and did this for all the lines that I drew out. And here's a compilation of that. Now you can see here that there are a line relief there. That's because my throat of my bandsaw only has five inches. So I have to cut vertical slots every five inches to make room for it. All these shots are sped up by 20x. That's how long it really took me to do this. At this point I noticed some binding, so I wanted to take a look at the blade. This is where I notice there were cracks in the blade, both on the front and the back. So I had some spare blades, I replaced it, and you can see here it's just cutting way faster. Because of the limitations of the throat of my bandsaw, I did have to transfer some of the lines to the back side, so this way I could actually make the cuts. I did leave some extra space between the actual lines and what I cut off. And here with the one inch belt sander, I went to the line that I made. I also had to do some hand sanding as the belt sander couldn't get to some of the edges. Here I'm just drilling some relief so that way the corners have a nice radius. Just like I did for the outside lines. Here I just used any random end mill that was smaller than a quarter inch to start removing the material. I was going to do this by hand but it was just taking way too long using a hacksaw. Remember this is sped up by 20x so this took a very long time. The largest hole in the center was done with a nice four flute that I had found and turned out very nice.
Here I start cutting out the slots where the axle boxes will slide up and down with. Again, this is sped up, and yes, it did take me a while to do this. Luckily I have power feed, both on the X and the Y, because it's on my lathe. And I was able to make, well, not quick work of it, but at least I didn't have to uh, flex my muscles to get this down. And it was all very nicely done by the machine itself. Here I'm match drilling all the holes for the different parts of the frames. I have to say, guys, please go out and buy good quality drill bits. The ones that I got from Harbor Freight really suck, and I've hurt myself already a couple times. I just go on to McMaster Car and buy the right ones. You're going to see here, I snapped this one. Here are a few photos of the finished frames. Here I'm going to start splitting them in half. I had super glued them together. So I use a razor blade to run it down the seam and slowly crack apart the two halves. They came apart nice and easy, and I cleaned them up. I then soaked them in HCL, which helped them get all brighter, get the mill scale off. Thanks for watching this episode of Handy Andy, and here's the last shots of the pattern hole. Also, I spent $20 on these two pieces of plate. See you in the next episode.